and a happy new year. It's 2020, welcome back. And here we are once again in our favorite little church in Herschbach in the Westerwald in the middle of Germany. So, I hope you had a wonderful Christmas period. I hope you had a wonderful start to the new year. We certainly did. We took a couple of days off and just went away up north and had a little break over New Year, which was really rather needed, and uh, we thoroughly enjoyed it. It was only two days, but better than nothing. Nevertheless, here we are back at the organ and uh, ready to start some new exciting projects for this year. Now, on the subject of projects, I think it's probably a good time once again to mention our recording. <sighs> I'm still waiting for the recording to come back. Now, I'm really, really so very, very sorry for everybody who's uh, or who um, uh, ordered a copy of the recording in advance. This was back in October that everything was done and dusted, we thought, and then sent off to the production company and things, and we're still waiting for it. Now, I've been in touch with these guys several times since December, basically, and we're still waiting for uh, uh, deadline uh, from them when we're going to get this back and I'm really not very happy so I've actually in the meantime been talking to other companies to see if they can help us out because uh, it's getting a bit embarrassing now because I promised you the recording for Christmas so like I say unfortunately it's slightly out with my control but we are working on it okay promise 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 so fingers crossed we'll have better news by next week's video so what's planned for 2020? Well, we're going to be visiting lots of new organs. We're going to be making lots of exciting new videos featuring new organs. We're going to be talking to an organ builder. We're going to be looking at organs being removed from churches, organs put into churches, organs being enlarged, organs being tuned, organs being worked upon, organs being everything. We're going to be looking at electronic organs. We're going to be looking, hopefully, at cinema organs. I haven't quite got in touch with anyone yet, but we have quite a number of things planned, which is rather exciting. And one of the more important things we're going to do, be doing is we're going to be learning the organ this year in a series of videos. We're going, now, last year we started with this, looking at sort of simple pieces of music. And this year, we're going to start right in at the deep end. A number of people have sort of requested different pieces of music by Bach. Everybody loves Bach on the organ. Um, who doesn't and who shouldn't and one of his most amazing pieces is something that I myself have actually never played yet it's one of the only pieces I haven't actually tackled by Bach yet and I thought we'd do it together and it's his legendary Passacaglia and Fugue in C minor BWV 582 and this is an absolutely wonderful, wonderful, wonderful piece of music. Like I say, I've never learned it before. We are now going to learn it together. <laughs> And so on, and so on, and so on. A passacaglia, wonderful Italian word. Um, a passacaglia is basically that, yeah? There's a sort of a theme that sort of runs throughout the entire piece. Now, normally it's a theme found in the bass, so when you're playing the organ, it would be in the pedals, and that runs throughout the entire piece. Now, of course, Bach, being clever, he gets bored of just having it in the feet all the time repeating itself, so he sort of has little variations on it, and then eventually it disappears from the feet altogether and it's hidden in the hands and things like that. And when the piece turns into a fugue later on, it's even a, sort of got it stuck in the fugue as well as the fugue theme. It's very clever. Bach, of course, being the genius that he was. Which actually brings me onto a subject rather close to my heart. And uh, this was... Uh, this was um, this was complimented, as it were, by uh, someone who uh, posted a comment a couple of days ago talking about Bach. And a lot of people get on a high horse about playing Bach. And when you play Bach on the pedals, you must never use your heels. You must only ever use your toes. Bach himself only ever used his toes. Well, I don't think he did. And I don't think any of us were there to find out. None of us knew. 
and none of us can know. Now, let's think about this for a second. Bach was very sort of innovative as an organist, yeah? And together with his peers and things, they sort of developed over the course of the sort of organ history in their time, they got away from this sort of only using four fingers on each hand style, and they sort of thought, well, hold on a minute, we've got these things, thumbs, we can use them too. Look at this. Ooh, we can use our thumbs to play, how exciting. So, I mean, this, this was in innovation back then, yeah? When I studied organ, one of my organ teachers insisted that I play Frescobaldi, sort of very, very old, old, old Italian organ music. And to be honest, I couldn't be bothered with Frescobaldi. It, it doesn't do anything for me, yeah? This kind of music, when I'm playing the organ, it has to have, it has to have balls, yeah? And, and I'm sorry, but Frescobaldi doesn't have balls, yeah? Bach has big balls, yeah? Which is great because, you know, Bach's stuff is really rather wonderful. Now, if he was using thumbs, in the, the early days, then I'm quite sure in, the, in later life, as organs were developing and organ, organ uh, mechanics and so on was developing, I'm quite sure he would at some point have thought, you know what, I don't have to be using my toes the whole time. I've got other bits in my feet as well. I shall be lazy and use my heels too. I'm willing to bet, none of us will ever be able to find out, so it's not a bet I can lose. But I'm willing to bet that Bach did at some point use his heels on the pedal board. So we're going to stop discussing that right here and right now. If you have a problem with it, that's not my problem. I'm going to use my heels because I'm playing on a modern organ. If I was playing in a very old fashioned organ, then I would probably not be able to use my heels and I would adapt accordingly. It's like if you were playing the music by Vierne. Vierne was the organist in Notre Dame back in the 1930s. He was blind, so when I'm playing Vienne, does that mean I have to close my eyes and not watch what I'm doing? Or if I'm playing Beethoven on the piano, do I have to have someone hold my ears closed? Beethoven was deaf, don't forget, so maybe I have to be deaf when I'm playing his works on the piano. So anyway, that's silly, and uh, I personally think this whole sort of heels on the pedal board thing is also rather silly. So hate me if you will, I don't care. Now, I assume that you are all wonderful, uh, very learned scholars of Bach, which means you have gone out and bought the collected edition of Bach's organ work from Bärenreiter. You've got the Bärenreiter Urtext edition. And of course you have, because you know that in volume seven, you will find his six trio sonatas and various individual pieces, as it says here on the front. Now, the six trio sonatas are absolute hell and I will probably never be performing those in public ever again. They remind me of my youth when I um, had sort of cold sweats and panic attacks, even just thinking about these things. Um, they sound or they look so easy, eh? you've just got sort of one line of music for the right hand, one line of music for the left hand, and one line of music for the pedals. Sounds easy, doesn't it? Well, you try playing them. They're not, they're impossible. Now, we swoop over to page 98 of this wonderful volume seven, and ta-da, we find our Passacaglia. So I've already introduced the theme of the Passacaglia to you, and let's have a quick look on the page. Here's the theme, as I just played it. Boom, there it is. Now, I, like I said, it repeats itself throughout the piece. So here it is, starting again. Done. Variation one. Variation two starts here, and off it goes, and repeats and repeats and ends there, and then variation three starts here, and so on and so on and so on, okay? So, what I thought we'd do today is we'd look at the first two variations. That's on page one of this piece of music, and as you can see, there's not a mark on there. I have never played this before in my life. Here we go. So here we go, let's put some of this together. Now I already played the footy part and um, I've already told you I'm cheating by using my heels. So let's just do that again. home I've got a wonderful recording from Lionel Rogue, a uh, Swiss 
organist playing this piece uh, on some magnificent organ. I can't remember which organ it was now, but it's a wonderful recording and I love it to bits. And um, he plays it 100% legato in the pedals, which is what I quite like to do as well, certainly at the beginning, like uh, it's written here. There's no, there's no, it's a wonderful thing about this edition of Bach, there's not much in the way of sort of um, interpretation there, you've got to sort of work it out yourself. So I'm going to be playing this completely legato, yeah? So like I said, I'm cheating a little bit by using my heels in this middle bit. So I'm using my left foot only for the E flat and the F. And then my right foot only for the G and the A flat. And otherwise, just use toes. And that sort of works. You could probably cheat at the bottom and just use your left foot, but it wouldn't be completely legato. So I'm going to do it that way. Now, let's have a quick look at the hands. Um, obviously, two lines for the hands, one for the right hand, one for the left hand. Now, there's this rhythm that's sort of very uh, omnipresent, as it were. So it starts with a sort of an offbeat tied over the bar, and then it sort of dissolves or resolves into something rather nice here. And this rhythm, you can see it sort of all the way here. It's always the same. Yeah, it's always the same. So here we are, here we are. And then and even in the second variation yeah it's the same rhythm all the way it's it's there all the time okay so you've got to find it and got to play it now even the left hand has its own rhythm the whole time and now when i just played the german version of this scene don't forget we do every video twice we do one video in german and one video in english and we do it scene for scene so while i just recorded the german version of this scene i noticed that there's a different rhythm in the left hand in one bar which i hadn't sort of noticed until i played it there's this sort of this this uh this, um, this sort of uh, resolving of harmony takes place in a different line in this bar. So that's typical Bach. Just when you thought it was getting easy, he puts a spanner in the works to make it more difficult. So let's get straight in and play the feet with the left hand. I cheated. I cheated. I was concentrating so much on the left hand again, my feet sort of automatically started doing other stuff. And of course, I had my left foot doing some heely toey work. So it shouldn't have done that. I want to keep it the other way. So I'm going to do that again and concentrate. That was better. Now let's do feet with the right hand. works like that. There's a bit of cheating going on there. I'm talking about back and his thumbs. I'm sort of slurring my thumb rather a lot in that middle line there. Now I can probably split the middle line up between left and right. Um, but I'm not going to yet. I'll work that out at some other point. Now that worked all right. So the right hand and the feet together, that's easier than the left hand and the feet for most people. It certainly is for me as well. So I think it's time to put it all together. Let's see what happens. Wish me luck.
Hmm, not quite. I forgot to swap my feet around there again at that position and that meant I lost concentration in my hand, forgot that little rest in the right hand, forgot to move in the left hand and so on and so on. So yeah, it's going at a fair speed so far, so I'm going to do it again and calm down. By the way, the registration I'm using, I'm using the 16 foot in the pedals coupled to eight foot and four foot flutes from the swell on this organ. And I've got my quintatone in the uh, Hauptwerk, quintatone playing that melody. It sort of gives it an almost Baroque sound even on this romantically voiced organ. So let's do that again. better but I cheated again in the pedals here oh it's gonna take a while this I think and this is only in, this is only a variation number one as it were so don't forget there's number two number three number four number five number six number seven eight nine ten eleven twelve there's about 400 variations of this by the time it gets to the end uh, so yeah this could take quite a while one last time made the same mistake again. You didn't hear it. It's not an audible mistake. It's a mechanical mistake. I'm cheating in my left foot, which I shouldn't be doing. So I need to remember that. Now, normally, of course, I would be marking this in the music, but I'm trying not to. I'm trying to memorize it as I go along. I like to play things by memory if I can, and uh, that's what we're going to do. Now, before we finish up for today. I'm just going to sight read the second variation. Okay, so no, no bad comments here. This is sight reading. I haven't done it yet. So this is just, so I haven't even done it for the German version. This is sight reading the second variation. It starts the same. basically the second one. So it's the same technique as the first one, it's just in a different, in a different uh, part of the organ. So the first one's up here, the second one's down here. So it's very dark and mysterious at the moment. That's what's going on. So it carries on with some rather complicated looking um, trio style movement in there. So I'm not looking forward to that, but that's how it's going to go on. Okay, there's a start to the Passacaglia in C minor. Um, more in coming weeks. <sighs> so, quite a bit of work to be done there, and I will definitely be having a look at the next couple of variations before I present them here. I don't want to um, I want to make a fool of myself in front of everybody. So, yeah, let's close up there for today. Obviously, I'm going to finish off with a little piece of music, as we always do, and it's probably going to be something jazzy. We've got something rather amazing at the moment. The church has been heated for the evening mass, and the organ is actually... Seem, uh, pretty much in tune. So I'm going to give you a piece, a blast of some organ, building up to full organ, a bit of a jazzy little number, and uh, show you what it sounds like even in the winter. It's been a while since I've heard it like that, so that's rather exciting. Um, yeah, thanks for watching. Thanks, of course, for supporting. You can continue to support us at our channel. We have um, down below, there are links to Steady and Patreon. They're pretty much the same thing. Steady for the German-speaking people and Patreon for the dollar-paying American style or international people. Those sort of monthly memberships if you want to support the channel. 
and we also have the possibility of just donating something via paypal.me if you should feel so inclined by the way we're busy we're, a long long time ago i told you that we're going to start up start up a sort of an online community thing for the uh, for the organ yeah and sort of like facebook for the organ alone and i've been working on that and it's almost ready for a public um for public um, sort of a distribution, as it were, um, our Patreon and Steady members have had sort of advanced access to it to test it out, and they seem to be enjoying themselves. But on their everyday posting things, posting comments and photos and videos and all sorts of things, is really rather exciting. So I'm hoping that that will be live for everybody in the next couple of weeks. So uh, fingers crossed that that will be going ahead. So yeah, if you want to be part of that in advance, then join us on Steady and Patreon. That's how it works. So. That's it for today. Thanks for watching. Uh, yeah, look forward to seeing you next time. Here's a piece of jazz at the organ. Bye-bye.